Hey guys, Dr. Alex Tatum here. Today we're going to be talking about erectile dysfunction. What is it and what causes it? That and more today on The Man Cave, Season 1, Episode 2. So, erectile dysfunction. It affects up to half of men over the age of 40 and is estimated to afflict almost 40 million men here in the United States alone. But what causes it? This is one of the most common questions I encounter in my practice. Despite having been diagnosed with ED and even prescribed medication, a lot of men I meet have never had their ED explained to them. So today we're gonna fix that. We're gonna cover two things. One, how erection is supposed to work, and two, what can go wrong. We're gonna save treatment options for our next video, so if you're discouraged by what you learned today, please don't be. No matter how bad you think your erectile dysfunction is, if you seek out care at a dedicated center of excellence, we can cure you. Now let's go to the drawing board. So how do erections work? A man's penis is essentially three tubes. There's a urine tube known as the urethra, which runs at the six o'clock position. This is how a man urinates. But there are also two erectile cylinders that start in the pelvis and run down the length of the penis, stopping just before the head. Now these cylinders are called the corpora cavernosa. Inside these cylinders, you have two small arteries known as the penile arteries. Now what's supposed to happen is that when a man is stimulated, the penile arteries dilate to about three to four times their normal size. This allows a rush of blood that fills the smooth muscle tissue inside the corpora. This causes the penis to increase in both length and girth while pinching off the veins that normally drain the blood from the penis. This provides a firm, satisfying erection that's suitable for sex. It does not affect sensation, orgasm, or ejaculation. Although each of those mechanisms are important, they're actually separate, and today we're gonna to focus just on erections. But how do erections fail? Now what's interesting is that the penile artery is actually one of the smallest arteries in the human body. They are smaller than the arteries in your heart or in your head. They also don't have a backup. This means that as a man, the moment you have a problem with your penile arteries, you've got a problem with your erections. As we age and start to get more and more miles on the odometer, so to speak, men can develop scarring in the walls of their penile arteries. This is known as atherosclerosis. This constricts the penile artery and prevents it from dilating despite adequate stimulation. This causes some problems. The obvious one is that it prevents a man from achieving firm, reliable erections when he's trying to be intimate. But it also puts the penis in what's known as a chronic hypoxic state. This means that the penis isn't just not getting enough oxygen or enough blood flow when a man's trying to be intimate, but 24-7. The truth is men are supposed to get three to four firm erections a day, but these normally occur at night and when men first wake up. I often ask patients if they remember waking up when they were teenagers, and the first thing they tell me is, oh yeah doc, I used to be able to chop down a tree with that thing, but that hasn't happened in years. That lack of blood flow actually causes scarring in the erectile bodies. This causes worsening erectile dysfunction in addition to a loss of both penile length and girth. I can't count the number of guys I've treated who get an erection for the first time in years, look down, and then say, well, heck doc, it ain't what it used to be. And they're not imagining it. Yes, obesity can bury the penis, but erectile dysfunction causes a steady loss of penile size. We'll talk more about treatment options in a future video, but the only surefire way to stop this progressive loss in size with erectile dysfunction is the penile implant. Now, everything I've talked about so far is known as vascular, or specifically arterial erectile dysfunction. But there's also a type of vascular ED known as venous leak. Venous leak is when blood leaks out of the penis prematurely. Some men can be born with this, others may develop it after a penile injury, with Peyronie's disease, or with the scarring that I previously described. But what if a man has had a spinal cord injury or he's had his prostate removed? This can affect erections through a slightly different but equally important mechanism. Back to the drawing board. When a man is exposed to an erotic stimulus, his brain perceives this and is converted into an electrical signal that travels down the spinal cord to the nerves in the pelvis. These nerves are tightly attached to the prostate. If there is any disruption of this wiring, whether it's in the brain, the spinal cord, or at the level of the prostate, then the penile artery can't even receive the signal that's supposed to tell it to dilate. This is what's known as neurogenic erectile dysfunction. 
Now, what can complicate matters is that the lack of erections from a nervous injury can still cause the same sort of scarring in the erectile bodies I mentioned earlier. This can lead to a worsening vascular component of erectile dysfunction and cause the same sort of loss of penile length and girth that I mentioned previously. This is why many men report a loss of penile length and girth after having their prostate removed. Now, this can be mitigated by proactive penile rehabilitation following prostatectomy or by early penile implant placement, but we'll talk more about that in a later video. Another issue that can further complicate the treatment of ED is that of testosterone. Testosterone is an essential hormone that helps make men men. Unfortunately, because of modern marketing, a lot of men are under the false impression that taking testosterone alone can restore their erections. And if they're already taking testosterone but still have ED, all they need to do is increase their dose. This is not the case at all. Testosterone is an essential factor for proper erectile function, but it's only one factor. All men need a certain baseline level of testosterone. If a man's testosterone is well below that, then the penile artery won't have enough signal to properly dilate. This phenomenon is most commonly seen in young men with hormonal problems. But if a man's testosterone is well within the normal range or has been restored with testosterone replacement therapy and he still has ED, then testosterone is not what's causing his problem. His ED is most likely being caused by one of the issues that we discussed earlier. So these are the mechanisms behind how erections work and how they can break. I think understanding this as a patient is incredibly important because it lays the groundwork for understanding how we both treat and cure erectile dysfunction. And to learn more about that, please stay tuned for our next episode. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more regular content. Hit that like button and notification bell and leave a comment. It really helps the channel out. Until next time, this is Dr. Alex Tatum signing off from the Man Cave.